Greta Thunberg. It, she's taking a break from protesting in favor of Gaia and the sun gods and all the rest of the weather religion. And she is standing with Gaza and Palestine. Uh, Greta Thunberg just posted a tweet. It says, week 270, today we strike in solidarity with Palestine and Gaza. 270 weeks. At that point, I think you just lose your job. But she never had a job, so she's just striking. Striking is her job, and usually she strikes for the benefit of the environmental left, which uh, profits and grows in power by uh, consolidating the socially and politically acceptable energy use. Uh, But today, she's decided she's going to strike for Gaza. This is true of the broader left. It's not just the White House. It's not just the professional activist, the sort of uh, marionette of the liberal regime, uh, Greta Thunberg. It is also Uh, Justin Trudeau, the leader of America's evil top hat Canada, who just tweets out, quote, as members of the Palestinian Arab and black Muslim communities gathered for prayer yesterday, I wanted them to know this. We know you're worried and hurting. We are here for you. We will not stop advocating for civilians to be protected and for international law to be upheld. I know a lot of people are confused about which side to be on here because a lot of people say, we don't really have a dog in this fight. The Holy Land is very far away. This is a conflict that's gone on in its present form for well over 100 years, and it's a conflict that has gone on broadly for uh, millennia, and so we we don't really pick a side here. Uh, But the side is going to pick you, I guess is how I would say it. If you look around and look at the people who are supporting Palestine slash Hamas versus the people who are supporting the state of Israel— Broadly speaking, you are going to see the most prominent leftists who are wrong about the most things in the most egregious ways, they are generally going to be on the side of Palestine. And the people with whom you generally tend to agree are who are who are right about generally the right number of things, they are broadly going to be supportive of the Israeli government. It's just that I'm not saying that it's a perfect one-to-one. I'm not saying that all the interests are totally aligned, but that's what happens. Rashida Tlaib, AOC, Ilhan Omar, uh, Justin Trudeau, Justin Castro, Greta Thunberg, Joe Biden, all the rest of them, they are pretty vocally on the side of the Palestinians. And if the libs, if the people who are most wrong about everything are uniformly on the, Pal- on the side of the Palestinians, then probably that's not the right side to totally be on, Right. Politics is a team sport, and I know people don't like that, and it makes people uncomfortable, and we all bemoan tribalism. That's another one of these words that cropped up in the last six, seven years that is largely meaningless, <laughs> but it's, it's just a word that's going around like a meme. But politics is tribal, and here we're talking about one of the most a- ancient tribes in the world, and a multiple ancient tribes, actually, uh, fighting over this. And so uh, it, it seems ill-advised to put yourself on the side of of uh, Greta Thunberg and Justin Trudeau and the the squad in favor of Palestine liberation, because the argument for Palestine liberation is the anti-colonial argument, which is ultimately just an anti-European, anti-dirty, rotten, white man argument uh, to to destroy uh, anything resembling Western civilization. That's that's what it's about. Uh, or, or someone put it in a pithy way, which was... Uh, a lot of the left doesn't hate Israel because they're Jews. They hate Israel because they're white <laughs> and because uh, the state of Israel uh, appears to have a lot of resemblances to any other British colonial project, much like the United States. And the arguments that are being wielded right now against the state of Israel will, and in fact, are currently being wielded against the U.S. as well. Right now, go to goodranchers.com slash Knowles. Every Halloween, parents are warned about the potential dangers in their kids' candy. But what we don't talk about are the potential dangers you encounter every day in the meat aisle of your grocery store. Lab-grown meat is growing more popular, and it's not unusual for foreign meat to be labeled as a product of the United States. And the scary truth is that we don't really know what's in our meat, unless you, like me, eat good ranchers. Last night, I had such a juicy and delicious chicken cutlet. Well, I had multiple chicken cutlets from good ranchers. I usually just focus on the beef. 
Because, you know, I only eat good ranchers, what, three times a week, four times a week if I'm lucky. And so I want to I want to focus it on the beef and the steak and the burgers, best burger you ever had. But so I, I go for the chicken. Magnificent. Best chicken cutlets I've had in a very, very long time. Right now, Good Ranchers is throwing in a treat for our listeners. 30 bucks off your order with code Knowles. Head on over right now to GoodRanchers.com. Use code Knowles. Get 30 bucks off with free express shipping. Code Knowles, Canada WLES, for 30 bucks off your box at GoodRanchers.com. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. A judge, a Democrat judge in Colorado, has just greenlit a campaign to keep Trump off the ballot in Colorado. Uh, This judge, Sarah Wallace, was appointed by the Democrat governor, Jared Polis, and uh, she has denied a motion by Trump and the Colorado GOP to throw out a lawsuit seeking to block Trump from appearing on the ballot in Colorado. And why are they going to block Trump from appearing on the ballot? Because he's an evil rapist, insurrectionist, Ukraine colluding, Russia colluding, mean old orange man who we really hate, and an invisible ink in the Constitution that says that mean orange men can't be on the ballot. I think, I think that's pretty much the substance of the lawsuit. And this Colorado judge says, okay, can go ahead. Or that's the substance of the campaign, rather. And the judge says, yeah, the campaign can go ahead. Sure. Okay. The last time we had a situation like this, I will remind you, was 1860. So people sometimes say that in 1860, Abraham Lincoln didn't appear on the ballot in the southern states, which is not quite true because elections were conducted differently than they are today. You didn't have a formal ballot on a computer screen or even just print it out. It was the parties would produce the ballots and the GOP didn't even invest in the South because they were never going to win and GOP was a new party with not a lot of resources. But the effect of it was basically that Abraham Lincoln was not a candidate that one could even really plausibly vote for in a lot of the country. And then when he got elected president, that was a cause of the Civil War because half the country felt that it it didn't have any representation. It didn't really have any say whatsoever. This is not an identical situation, but it's pretty close. If the liberals succeed at kicking Donald Trump off the ballot in 2024, it's going to tell us two things. One, it's going to tell us that Trump is obviously electable. One of the silliest lines I hear is that Donald Trump can't win the general election. He can't win a general election which I know is false because he won at least one general election. (laughs) He did. A lot of people who said the same thing in 2016, Donald Trump can never win a general election. They were quite surprised when he won the general election in 2016. But then they use the uh, dubious election of 2020 to say, well, we'll see now he, he, actually he can't win all night. He could. I'm not saying he will. I'm just saying he could. So it's going to, the fact that the Dems want to keep him off the ballot shows you they don't think it's going to be a slam dunk to defeat him at the ballot box. Even with the, vote harvesting, even with the drop boxes, even with all of their nonsense and all of their shenanigans that open the elections to fraud, they still are not convinced they can beat them at the ballot box. So they want to, they want to uh, prevent voters from even having the choice at the ballot box. That's the first thing it's going to tell you. The second thing it tells you is we are dangerously close to not having much of anything in common as a country. We are dangerously close to the conditions that we were at in 1860. And I'm not one of these catastrophists who says that we're always going to be on the brink of civil war and we're all going to, I'm certainly not encouraging civil war by any means, but it could happen. Just like people sometimes say, do you think we're living in the end times? My answer is, I don't think we are, but someone's going to be living in the end times. I guess we could be. That's kind of how I feel about civil war. I'm not saying that we're headed for civil war, but we could be. Civil wars happen. <laughs> and the liberals would appear to be cultivating the conditions to make it much more likely. Boy, what a great clip that was now. Hey, 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 hey. Ring that bell. Subscribe to The Michael Knowles Show. See you next time.